Caroline at Cheryl from Teaching Two and Three Year Olds. I recently got a few messages from my readers asking me if I would explain our learning centers and what we have in each center. So I thought I'd take a moment and show you exactly what we do in each learning center of our classroom. This is our reading and our writing area. And I like to keep these two next to each other because um, it's like a whole literacy area. So we have our writing table here that we switch out um, different activities. And then we have our little reading area over here. And since this week's theme is penguins, we display some penguin books and a little penguin stuffed animal. And then we also have our bookshelf with some books that the children can look at. We also keep books over in our circle time area as well. But this is a place for them to go during the learning centers where um, they can look at a book independently or sometimes a teacher will come over here and sit down and read a book to a few children. We also have a block area and this is a good place for children who like to, they might be a little bit louder in this area, um, they like to build. We kind of change out what we're doing in this area um, maybe every week or two. Sometimes this will be used as our train table. Right now it's an area um, that is we're having penguins at the train table. They're going to be building with penguins and we always have some blocks and some cars and some people. We also have a dramatic play area, and this is in the farthest corner of the room because again, this can be a louder area, but um, we have a kitchen and a little table. We have dolls in the doll bed and a high chair. When we have our dress-up clothes out, they go on our dress-up clothes um, on the hooks on our rack. Um, this week we're studying penguins, so we have a big boat because they're gonna go fishing. Um, so we like to have props that um, kind of go with our theme. Um, not always, but usually, the, usually we do. Another fun area that we have is our light table. And this is kind of tucked in a corner and we usually have something on it that relates to our theme. Since this uh, week's theme is black and white, we have black and white pieces on the light table. Our easel is part of our art center and we keep it near the sink so that um, the children can easily go wash their hands when they're finished. Um, I love using the easel. I think it's a very, very important piece um, because it works the arm, shoulder, and hand and wrist in a different position than when they're working on a flat surface, which is very, very important for building fine motor skills. Another center that we have is our sensory bin. And um, we love to use this bin with different textures, different colors, um, for pouring, for um, transferring. It's a great, um, not only works for the, different um, textures for sensory, but also it's a great place to build fine motor skills as the pieces are being moved around. We also use our big table that's near our art area for our table activities. Now some, in the past we've done our art during our center's time, but because of how our schedule has to be this year, our art is done at a separate time. So you have a choice where you could either use this table for art, and if I did that, then I would make sure to have another table for table activities. Table activities during center's time is an important part because it builds different skills. We are working on color recognition. We are working on counting and number recognition. We are working on shapes we are working on fine motor. So we like to work um, different, with different skills with our, at our t activities table, and a teacher is close by. If a child needs some assistance, she can give them the, that assistance, or if they're doing fine on their own, it's a great place for independent activities. Over at this table is our Play-Doh. 
And not all places um, have Play-Doh every day, but I really like to whenever we can because not only is it a great place to build fine motor skills, but it's also a very calming and relaxing activity for children who might have had a tough morning before they arrived at school or if they're having some separation issues. And some children just, some children just simply take a while to warm up, just like adults, and they need a place that they know they can start out before they move into the other areas of the room. Another um, center that we have is our Science and Exploration Center. Um, and this usually is related to our theme, and um, we change it out usually every week. And we kind of moved this center around. It used to be over near our dramatic play, but right now we kind of have tucked it into this quiet little corner and it's really worked out well. We like to utilize every part of our classroom. And so even though this is our circle time area, during center's time, we use this as a place for, um, we'll put cars out here, or we love this big basket of blocks. Um, often children will they'll take a book over here or they might have a puzzle but it's just another place another area in the classroom where several children can join or I'll turn on music and we'll have some instruments there I kind of vary that um, each week just kind of depending on what we're doing so I also wanted to talk a little bit about managing um, centers time preferably I would love to have centers time be a full hour however sometimes you just simply can't. Um, for whatever reason, your schedule can't be quite the way you want it. And because in our preschool, we have like we have several different classes going on at the same time, we need to um, set up our schedule so that we're not all using the gym at the same time, and we're not all going outside at the same time. So that means some things have to be changed. So um, I unfortunately cannot have centers for a full hour. So we have it for a half hour when our children arrive, and then after snack, they get to revisit it again. And I will be honest, I wasn't sure how it was going to work, but it has worked out great. So always know that, um, you know, there's always the ideal way to do something, but you can, you can move things around a little bit, tweak them, see how they're working. Um, but I, again, preferably it would be an hour, but our children do get an hour total. As far as managing centrist time, you will hear a lot of different methods. You will see that um, there is, children are rotated. They have to be at a certain center at a certain time. I don't know, maybe the teacher will ring a bell or something that signals the children to move on to another activity. Another method that teachers use is they will, the kids have to um, have like some kind of a bracelet or something, or a tag, a name tag. And as they move from center to center, they have to put their name on there. And every center is limited. So if all, if the um, center has four children, for example, and that's the limit, that's all that can go there. My method that has worked for me is simply let them be where they wanna be. I firmly believe in this, it's worked for our children. Um, it, the, I, uh, teachers will ask me, okay, well, what happens when it's really, really crowded in a certain area? And usually children can figure that out. And if I hear them kind of, oh, you're pushing me, then I will maybe ask them, oh, are there too many children at this table? Maybe some of us need to move somewhere else and we can come back later when there's not as many children. But you would be amazed at how many times they can figure it on their own. They don't want to be cramped. They don't want to be sitting practically on someone else's lap. So they will move on and they will wait. So for me and my children, it has always worked out that they can be where they want to be, when they want to be, for as long as they want to be there. This is especially true with our two-year-olds and our young three-year-olds. Because if you sit back and observe this age group, they rarely will stay in one area for very long. They need to move. So we will find them almost like ping-ponging. They'll be over at the Play-Doh area. Then they'll be over at the puzzles. Next thing we know, they're over in the dramatic play area. Another thing with two-year-olds and some young three-year-olds, they tend to want to go together in groups. And it's kind of fun to watch because you can tell where they've been and where they're headed and they follow each other. And you'll find, we'll find out 
like five children over in the dramatic play area, I'll turn my back, suddenly that area is empty, and then I'll find them all over at the sensory bin. So that's why I kind of like to let them lead the way and decide where they want to be. And if it's not working out and there's too many children, then I work with them to figure out what can we do about this. It's a great way for them to learn how to problem solve rather than for a grown-up to dictate where they need to be, for how long, and then they have to move on to another area. Another question is, what if you get a child who never wants to go to a certain area? Well, then I would want to know why, and I would observe that child. Why isn't that child wanting to go to the writing area? Or why does he want to stay at the block so long? Observe and find out why. And really, is it, if it's not a big deal, leave it alone. But maybe what is at the writing table isn't interesting him, or maybe he just simply isn't feeling comfortable yet using his fine motor skills. So that's why I like to kind of see what the children are interested in and bring in some more activities that I know that I might get the children who might not normally want to go over to that area they might want to try it. So a lot of what teaching is, all of what teaching is really, is observing your children, getting to know them, knowing what they like, knowing what they feel comfortable with, knowing what they don't feel comfortable with, and tweaking your environment to see what makes your classroom hum. And when I say that, that's when all of a sudden you look around your room and there are children engaged in every area of the classroom. And I call that humming. The classroom is humming. And you teachers know it is the best feeling ever. Doesn't happen all the time. There are days, many days, where sometimes it doesn't happen at all. But when it does, it feels really good. And I really take notice as to what was set up that made that classroom hum. And can I do it again? With different activities. Thanks for watching.